might start by wetting the portrait with clean water and I'm using loose strokes to fill in the hair with my Jackson's brush from the Raven range and it's a size 3. I'm just letting the pigment do its own watercolour stuff. I'm also touching in on the features where there are shadow areas really loosely and I'm coming in with my kitchen roll to blot the areas that are lighter in the portrait and I'm using a bit of tilting to produce some nice interesting runs and then back in with the kitchen roll and a damp brush to blot out any lighter areas. The painting is dry now and I'm trying to rub out some of the paint on the face with damp kitchen roll but the paint was quite staining so it didn't lift as well as I wanted. I should have checked the staining properties but it's, as it's a step sketchbook painting it's not such a big deal. Now I'm onto some shadow areas with milky consistency paint and a Jackson's number no. 3 watercolour brush. I'm using water, just a damp brush, to soften up the edges. So anywhere where I want a soft edge, just dip, dip the um, brush back into your water so you've got a clean brush and just run it along the edge there. And then that just softens everything up for you. And it's on the um, first layers, on your initial layers, this is really what, what I want anyway in this style of painting, what I'm trying to achieve. Oh, stream close up. Now I've changed to a liner brush. And, um, it's a Jackson Silver Line Zero brush and I'm using a thicker consistency paint and you can see that, that I can do finer lines with this there for the iris I just wet the brush and I drew out the existing um, paint that was there which is a really good technique because you don't use as much paint and it gives you a nice lighter effect. The paper is still damp at this stage but because I'm using a thicker consistency of paint it doesn't bleed or flow as much as in the earlier layers. So I'm deciding which areas I want soft edges at and running my damp brush next to them and the areas that I want to keep hard like this here between the side of the face and the hair so we've got a really sharp transition between the two. So a clean damp brush just gently lifts out the areas on our eyelids that I want to be lighter. I decided that the eyebrow was too low down so I've just rubbed it out with the damp brush and gone back in with a new position of the eyebrow. out where I didn't want it to go. So here I am erasing the area with my damp brush. And I've dropped a bit of water in to try and get a bit of texture there. And now we're on to another layer of hair. Again I'm using nice loose strokes flicking the hair. I don't want to recreate individ every individual hair, just a nice impression, keeping in line with the best qualities I think of watercolour. You can add drops of water in areas where you want more abstract effects, letting the paint do its thing. Especially sort of 
towards the background. I think it works really well. Makes it recede. That's what I meant to say. So I did a bit of salt here, hoping to get some textural effects. But sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I painted the strap on the top just to give a bit of information on what's on happening in the painting. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't, just like salt. So here I'm using the liner brush again and flicking the paint to give the illusion of hair strands. But I don't want to do too precise moves because I want to keep it nice and loose. Now I've got thick, out of the tube consistency paint here to do some really dark lines. And here when I'm wanting more detail I'm flattening the bristles on the brush to, so I can sort of use the edge rather than a point and this gives you really nice thin lines. giving it a little spritz and there's some tilting and this just softens up all the work that I've done where I want it to. Right, this is a Matthew Parler lift out brush but it works much better if you let the paint dry. I'm trying to use it on wet paint but you can see and get an idea of this sort of effect you can get. So let your painting dry and now I'm going in with a creamy consistency paint just reinforcing the dark areas to make them really pop. Layering is also a good way of darkening areas rather than just using a thick consistency in watercolour. I'm using that liner brush because it's detailed, because it's a fine detail that I want to get. And then I remembered that I'd bought a rake brush, which is a brush with uneven bristles, and I thought, oh, I'll have a go at the hair this and you can see it's a really nice effect but this is what your sketchbook is about trying new things I do think I went over it a bit later on too much but yeah I'm sure I'm going to use the bait brush again so I'm doing a little bit more refining a little bit of spritzing to soften areas and more lifting out to try and get the highlights but I think with, with the paint being a staining paint it's not as um, successful but if it was um, a different sort of paint you'd really see those highlights so it's very subtle but there you go So I've got some Ganzai Tambi starry colour watercolour paints and I added these to highlight the iris. I love the way the paint sparkles 
when it swept and also on the eyelet on her top and had a little bleed there but the trusty kitchen roll came in handy and I thought why not use the gold as highlights on the hair? Do you think it works okay? I had to resist painting a lot more gold on the painting. In the reference photo I used, the girl had black hair with purple streaks, so I just put the gold where the purple was. And then it's just about done. I added a little bit of red for the background because I was using contrasting colours in this series of painting and I also did a bit more lifting now before I decided that it was completely finished. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and why not try your own one colour portrait? I think these are really effective and help you just concentrate on values. So until next time, bye!